The first app we're tackling in this course is Snapchat. I'm sure most of you've heard about it, but if you're not familiar with it, Snapchat is a photo messaging app that lets users take photos, edit them with a plethora of filters, and send them to their friends for a limited amount of time before they disappear. Forever. There's more to it than that, but that's the general gist of it. Now, Snapchat's UI can be pretty sensitive and controversial topic amongst designers. When it launched, Snapchat seemed to break most generally accepted usability rules, a risk that has since proven to be an absolutely groundbreaking one, and we now consider Snapchat a true design pioneer. For example, Snapchat was the first app to open directly to the camera, which encouraged people to create and experiment rather than consume. Snapchat also took gesture by the storm, allowing users to take shortcuts by swiping, holding, pinching, and dragging. Mastering those gestures took time, but it's exactly that time invested that kept people coming back for more. Snapchat was the first app that introduced the filter drag in control, where users can swipe left or right to apply a certain filter to their image or video. And last but not least, Snapchat was the first app to break the traditional iOS navigation design pattern of presenting view controls on a stack or modally and replaced it with a multi-dimensional navigation where the users can swipe left, right, up, down to access different screens on the app. This navigation pattern is now widely used in iOS applications with a social component that includes some sort of newsfeed, only a handful of screens, and the need to access each of those screens quickly from anywhere. And this particular navigation pattern is the control we're going to reproduce first. The user can swipe left or right to get to a different controller. It's fast, it's fun, and it provides a really interesting challenge for us developers. It's important to note that all of the animations and transitions in Snapchat aren't just cute little gimmicks. They serve an actual purpose, just like any user interface animation should. As the user scrolls left or right, the transition animation provides hints to what's about to happen. Each of the controllers has its own separate color. For example, the chat controller is blue and the discover controller is purple, so you instantly know where in the app you are. Similarly, the camera button, which is big on the camera screen and allows the user to take a photo, becomes smaller on the other screens. It changes purpose. When you press the camera button on a secondary controller, it returns you to the camera screen. Now let's dive into our sample app setup. All the navigation controllers and views are created in storyboards, and each element is carefully positioned with auto layout constraints. This is how I've set up the outlets on the navigation view. The camera button has a bottom constraint, which I've named, and by changing this constant in code, we can move the button up or down. So it's really easy to line up those three icons just by changing their bottom constraint constants. If you set up your auto layout properly in Interface Builder, you can really cut down on the code. For example, these are the chat and discover icons. I've set up the chat icon height to be the same as the chat icons width. And I've set up the discover icons width to be the same as the chat icons. So when I change the chat icons width constraint, it changes both the chat icon and the discover icon at the same time automatically. Now let's have a look at how the app is put together. There's a main view controller with a container view for the camera controller, and that's on screen all the time. There's a scroll view controller with three child view controllers. In this course, we'll only be doing the horizontal scrolling, not the vertical scrolling. Let that be a take home exercise. So there's three child view controllers, the chat view controller, the lens view controller, and the discover view controller. The initial hierarchy is a little complicated, so I'll go through how the app looks like when it starts. At the back, we have a view with a camera view, and in front of that, we have a color changing view, which will show the blue and the purple of the controllers. Then we have a scroll view on top of that with three child views, chat, lens, and discover. And on top of that, we have a navigation view. The navigation view is where all the buttons are. If you press a button, the navigation should react. But if you tap anywhere else, it should pass the touch through back to the views behind the navigation views. All right, that's all you need to know before we jump into coding. In the next video, we'll hook up the buttons to animate in the corresponding view controllers.